Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for another thought from the Bible. We're getting back into rainy season here in Liberia with some big storms and it's still just drizzling a little bit right now so I'm here underneath my porch coming to you today for this week's video. But today I wanted to share a little bit of a story with you which I hope will encourage you. But a little bit of background first. See, my husband Dave and I moved here to West Africa around two and a half years ago now with Mission Aviation Fellowship. And when we arrived all that time ago, we decided to buy a car. And we use it for, for all sorts of things here. We use it to pick up shopping, to get to church, to take the occasional trip for a meal out, or to go on an outing to a local swimming pool, something like that. Lots of things that help make life that little bit more enjoyable. And it's been an absolute blessing to have it here. But we knew though, we knew that the corrosion in Liberia is absolutely incredible. Some combination of the, the salty air from the ocean right round the corner and the intense humidity leads to absolutely anything metal going rusty. And we knew, we knew the car was, was struggling with that, but we didn't realise quite how badly. Now, knowing that there were a few things that needed fixing on the car, we decided that we were going to try and raise a little bit of money to do some crowdfunding to get everything that needed fixing all done together in one fell swoop. And so we, we picked a figure, we decided we're going to try and raise £2,000, about $2,500. We, we think that that will cover everything. And amazingly, we raised that amount in less than a week. That was absolutely incredible and we were feeling exhilarated. God was meeting our needs through his precious people who were stirred to generosity on our behalf. It is so humbling and so incredible to be on the receiving end of that generosity. But then, after the car went into the garage, we received the news. The frame of the car, the, the bit underneath holding it all together was so badly corroded that it was absolutely impossible to fix. And suddenly I felt completely and utterly broken broken. I spent a whole day basically just sitting and staring into space, feeling miserable and asking myself all of those kind of questions that you do when you get some bad news, right? Are we, are we going to have to buy a new car? How are we going to afford that? Do we need to try and cope without? If we do that, then what about all that money we raised? How do we give those donations back to, to all of those people who gave so generously? And honestly, it wasn't just the car. It's been a, a stressful time. It's been a hard couple of years here. It's been busy. There has been so much work to do. It's sometimes a, a difficult environment to exist in with the climate and a very different culture and all of those challenges that come in living in an environment so very different to the one that you grew up in. And the car was just the final piece of the puzzle. It was that last straw that broke the camel's back. And it led me to question, why are we even here? Why are we doing this? Why does this feel so hard? Why is it just one thing after the next thing after the next thing? Where are you in this God? I wonder if you've ever been in a position where you find 
you've found yourself asking questions like that. Maybe it's been in that kind of situation where it's just been a run of circumstances and, and it feels as though everything's gone wrong and it feels like your work has come to nothing and, and you're questioning, why am I even here? God, why are you letting this happen? Where are you, God? I think that's such a common season for us to go through at some point in our lives. But of course, with God's absolutely, sometimes infuriatingly perfect timing, I, uh, I picked up my Bible to read that day because if you watched last week's video, you know I, I have to keep reading the Bible regardless of how I feel so I get that little tick in my plan. That's just the way that I function. But anyway, I picked, I picked it up to read and I found myself amongst the disciples, amongst Jesus' own disciples, trapped on a boat in a furious storm. The waves were swamping over them and they were fearing for their lives. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and they said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care if we drown? And that felt a bit like an echo of what I was feeling. Don't you care, God, that I am drowning here? Don't you care that there doesn't seem to be a solution, that there doesn't seem to be a way out of this mess? Don't you care enough to fix this? But along with that passage in Mark, there was also a, a reading from the book of Exodus that day in um, the segments of the Bible that, that I would have to read in order to continue this plan of reading through the Bible in a year. And in that passage in Exodus, Moses had just arrived back in the land of Egypt and, and he was meeting with the elders of the Israelites, showing them the miraculous signs that God had told him to do, telling them about his encounter with God, about God's instruction to him to go to Egypt to lead his people out. And we read that when they, when the Israelites heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. These Israelites were absolutely in a storm. There was no conceivable way out of the situation in which they found themselves. They were slaves. They were forced to work. The dreams of the land promised to their ancestors, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, those dreams seemed impossibly far away. And it must have seemed to them as if God was sleeping that they were altogether alone and asking him, don't you care if we drown here? Don't you care? And yet in the midst of the mess and the storm and the chaos and the craziness, the Lord, God Almighty, was concerned about them. He had seen their misery. The Lord was concerned about the disciples rocking in their tiny boat in the midst of a storm that could kill them. And the Lord was concerned about me, little old me here in Liberia, sitting and wondering what I was gonna do about my car. Kind of insignificant compared to those other stories that I was reading about. And yet the Lord was concerned about me. And the good news today is that the Lord is also concerned about you. He sees 
you, whatever you may be facing today, whatever circumstance, whatever hardship, whatever situation that feels just that little bit too much above you, that leaves you questioning, where are you in this God? Don't you care that I'm drowning? He is concerned about it and he is concerned about you because he loves you so much more than you can conceivably imagine or understand. He is concerned about you. He knows what you are going through. He sees what is going on. He sees your misery and your joy and your hardship and your contentment and your frustration. He sees those moments of doubt. He sees those moments of confusion and he cares. There is nothing outside of his knowledge. And you know what, as you read through those stories, you discover that the disciples were saved. When Jesus arose and told the very wind and the waves to be still. And the Israelites were saved. Even if, you know, things did get a little bit worse for a while there. They were saved by God's mighty hand leading them out of slavery with plagues spreading across the land of Egypt and I was saved because on a Saturday morning less than 48 hours after that first hint of bad news about our car the mechanic called us up to explain that he had found a replacement frame in excellent condition and even more incredibly, falling within the budget of the amount of money that we had just plucked out of the air, thinking that that hopefully will be enough to cover it all. And though there was that day of darkness and doubt and questioning, the end result is so much better than what I could have hoped for because it will be stronger and it will last longer than if they had simply been able to weld and patch up the old frame that was full of holes. God has brought the best out of a situation that seemed to be the worst because he is concerned about me just as he is concerned about you, about what is going on in your life. Whether it's something huge or something that seems so small as to be beyond God's notice, he cares, he is concerned about you, he's concerned about you specifically. That is incredible. The creator of everything, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, he cares so much about you that he is involved in the most tiniest intimate details of your life. You can bring your concerns to him and know that he's not gonna dismiss them. You can know that he's not going to dismiss you And I hope, I really hope that I can remember this story the next time there's some kind of calamity in my life. And rather than spending a day, a week, a month, a year, whatever it is, rather than spending that time feeling miserable and uncertain, to instead trust again that God does know what is going on, that he has it all in hand, that he is working behind the scenes, that when we face those worst case scenarios, that is the opportunity for God to bring about the best through them. That is an encouraging thought in whatever we may face in these lives that we live. Thank you so much for joining me today for that thought from the Bible, that little story from my life here in Liberia. I hope it encouraged you and I'll be back on Wednesday next week with another video, another thought from the Bible. I will see you then.